Hey, this is Metal Mike, and welcome to the newest Metal for Life column. This month is called All Pent Up, and we are talking about reinventing your pentatonic approach. Check this out. All right, guys, let me show you what I did in this exact example. I took a B minor pentatonic scale, except I only used the notes as they would fall on the bottom two strings, the E and A string. So if you would think of a pentatonic B minor and play the bottom two strings, you would have these notes. And if you play the same exact scale, but starting it from the ninth position, like the next box that would attach itself to the, to the main one right here, you would have these notes. So I had this, I had this idea that basically went and in order to extend this lick and make it basically sound, sound cool, I have played the same exact example except starting up an octave, and when I was done with that, I moved it up another octave. This is an incredible way of moving your ideas across the fretboard without having to relearn or reconfigure your fingerings. All right, so this is what's happening. <laughs> And I basically play the same thing from this B. And once again. And I finish it off with the few more pentatonic licks. So I end up back in the in the area of B to kind of finish of finish off the lick. And now let me talk about the picking on this. To pick this exact example, I use everything in an alternate stroke fashion. Basically, it's up and down for the whole entire lick. Very simple. As long as you go up and down on every other note, you can finish off this example smoothly. <laughs> Okay, so this example was played in a way that I would more than likely play it in the solo, and you have four notes per beat versus the example prior, which was only two notes per beat, right, and eight notes. So this is 16 notes, four notes per beat. The lick is a lot quicker and smoother at a decent tempo, and I like, I like this particular example better because when you have these four notes per beat followed by another four notes, another four notes, when you change the positions between, you get this nice cascading feel, which is a lot less predictable to the ear versus ta da 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 right? The notes move a lot quicker and your ear, it's a lot more pleasant to listen, it's a lot less predictable. So this is one of my favorite ways of playing it. Okay, so this next example, has a fairly simple idea. It's a one note for right hand tapping and only one note that is fretted. I have a small little motif, which once again, I drop down an octave and I drop down an octave. So I go from high to low, utilizing octaves with little patterns that have two strings to them. Okay, let me show you how this example goes. <laughs> Okay, let me show you what I'm doing in this example. This utilizes a very simple idea. The top note is actually tapped, and you use one finger for one note that is fretted. See, it's the same exact thing. You're going from 12th fret to 7 on the high E string, 
12th fret to 7 on the B string. When I move this idea to the string sets of 3 and 4, you go between frets 9 and 5. So, so the gap between the notes lessens by 1. Same idea repeats on a string 5. And I add one more thing. Right? So you have to kind of do a little more melody and so I could resolve it nicely to E. I add this F sharp resolves to E. Okay, so the next few little licks stem for a very simple and common pentatonic idea. Before I play it for you, it's something that you hear all the time. And the idea for my basically next four examples came from a student of mine who was playing what I am going to show you next, except he dropped it down a string set. And I heard a sound that I've been hearing for a very long time, but never really took the time to figure out what it was. So I got excited about bringing this in for Metal for Life and showing it to you too, all right? So check this out. Let me start off with the more common pentatonic idea right now. Okay, so this little example, I'm sure you've heard many times before, in metal solos, but I'll show you very simply what I'm doing. So you have notes that are picked and there are some pull-offs in there as well. This whole little example takes place between strings one and two, high E and B. So as you can see, I picked the first note, pull off and I pick the next note. And this, this gives you nice smooth sound that you can basically repeat for your solo and you have a really cool lick that's uh, very useful and, um, and brings a lot of life to your solos. Okay, so this next example I just played for you guys is what I've really got psyched to show you because we have the first example just drop down the string set. So instead of playing the lick before between strings one and two, I'm playing it on strings two and three. Right, and you have the sound that's used a lot by um, Dave Mustaine or Alexi from Children of Bottom, or uh, even the great Dimebag used this a lot in Pantera solos. And uh, it's also, man, because you guys probably will know the first lick already, so just drop it down a string set and uh, you, have a, you have a great sound. Again, the first note is always picked with a rather note being pulled off. <laughs> The only two notes that you pick down up is the notes between strings three and two. And you basically get some mileage out of the lick by repeating it. Okay, so for this next example, I embellish the lick a little bit, and I played it in 5-4. So you have four notes, followed by two notes, followed by four notes. And this is a really cool way of, of playing. You could play this lick over your rhythm to, to add this almost like chaotic, out of control sound. The first person that comes to mind is Dave Mustaine. He uses this lick quite a lot in his solos and kind of adds this kind of like a, like a crazed uh, Dave Mustaine sound. You know the sound I'm talking about. So um, that's the lick. <laughs> 